Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Scott and today Terry and I are going to be showing you how to go from this front end on your C7 to the new ZR1 com conversion kit from Extreme Online Store. Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Scott and today Terry and I are going to be showing you how to take your C7 that has this front end on it and turn it into this. This is the new C7 ZR1 front end from Extreme Online Store and I tell you what, I love it. So guys, uh, not too long ago I had one of our customers actually call and ask me they had decided they were going to put this front, buy this front nose from Extreme Online Store and Extreme went ahead and referred him over to Terry and I to be able to put a front nose on for him and they wanted a quote on how to how it to, how much it was going to cost to put this on and I had told him I'm like well we haven't done one of these front noses before we've done the factory ones but we haven't done the ZR1 conversion and so that got me thinking I'm thinking well I guess it's time I've always been wanting to do it anyhow and was just kind of afraid of doing it but uh, so I reached out to Extreme Online Store and told them that I wanted to go ahead and do it. And uh, lo and behold, two days later, I'm um, getting notified that the crate has arrived. And so I had to uh, make in haste to get it to the body shop. So I called a, a good friend of mine, uh, Jonathan, over at Trino's Auto Body. And his dad owns the company and he's been painting, he's been pa painted this car as well as my 88 for, uh, he's been doing it for almost 30 years. And so I really, really trust him. And they were able to get the car right in. They, uh, they had me bring the car in as well. I brought, my, brought the whole crate in and they painted the whole thing. Uh, everything down below, the spoiler as well as the front bumper. And then they used my car to be able to color match it. And then they said, hey, come get your car. We don't we won't, don't want it sitting here for a week while we're doing the car or while we're getting your front nose done. So uh, they got, they were do, they did all the color match. And I tell you what, as you can see for yourself, this thing looks awesome. So um, if you happen to be in the Sacramento area, um, I'm going to put a little bit of that information, show you uh, me taking it over there and uh, showing you their shop. So if you guys are in need of having any paint work done, you got it right there. I'm gonna give you all that information. It'll be on the screen and uh, you'll be able to see it. Uh, they took really good care of me and they will take good care of you guys also. They, uh, they perform miracles on my 88 and I'll include that in there too. Um, but uh, you couldn't get a better color match and it just looks great. So, um, so anyway, you guys, sit back and relax, um, and uh, you'll be able to see how we did this. Um, unfortunately, I had a little bit of a problem. It looks like I inherited some sort of fender bender on this car when I first got it. It was not on the Carfax. I didn't know it was there. Um, but uh, the best that Terry and I can tell is that uh, the car was hit over in this front corner over here, which caused some of the bracketry on the bottom that puts this bumper on to not line up. And so we, you're going to see in here, we had to do some uh, creative engineering to be able to get it on there. And I can tell you what, after Terry got done with this, I don't think it's going anywhere. I'm going to have to be very careful that I don't ever hit anything. I pray to God that I don't. Um, but uh, it won't come off as easy as it as the old one came off. Um, this thing has been engineered very, very tightly. You're going to see that. Um, he came up with some different types of brackets. Um, this thing's not coming apart. I, I can guarantee you that. So um, guys, like I said, sit back and relax and you'll be able to see and you'll be able to get the gist of what's involved. Um, I am going to tell you that this is one of the more challenging uh, installs that Terry and I have ever done. And um, and so I would highly recommend that you, uh, A, that you have a lift if you're doing it on your own. Uh, it could be done on the ground, jacked up, but it will be a nightmare. Um, and if you can, take it to a body shop and have them do it. That way, you know, they've got all the tools to be able to do it. Um, otherwise, reach out to us. We can help you with it also. 
but uh, like I said, uh, it is a, it is very challenging. There's uh, there's certain things that uh, you just you're just going to have to take your time with it. Uh, we did this in one day. Uh, it took us uh, I don't know around what eight hours somewhere in that ballpark. Seven to eight. Yeah, seven to eight hours to do this. Um, and uh, I, one thing I want to point out to you here is that the emblem, and you'll see this in the video, that the emblem, it does not have, the spot in the bumper does not have the inserted area or the depressed area to be able to set the emblem in place. So you have to do some measuring to be able to get it. And we just measured it out from the old bumper and we were able to, I bought a new emblem and put it on. You could reuse your old emblem if you wanted to, but I, I since I was doing this all new, I wanted it all new. So anyway, that's uh, another little hurdle. So you want to make sure that you're prepared to be able to have uh, something that you can measure with to make sure that that's, that's done. Um, other than that, uh, it, it all, anything you see here on the front side, it lined up, just popped right in place. It looks great. It fit great. We really didn't have to fight that. You can see where we had to do some things in the, in the wheel wells. Um, but the majority of the work that we did was apparently from some sort of, uh, damage that the car already had. So, um, in, in, uh, extremes, uh, defense, um, I think that if everything would have been right on the car, <laughs> it would have fit exactly the way it's supposed to, but we did have to, um, drill out a couple different holes, put a few different rivets in, in places to lock it in place. And you'll be able to see that in the video. Okay. So guys, again, enough of that. Sit back, relax, watch the show, and um, hopefully you like it. So guys, here's the box I got from Extreme Online that has my bumper and all of the uh, aero kit for the front end of the car, um, the new splitter. And uh, we're going to be loading that up here into the Escalade here in a second. And then that way I can get it down to Trino's Auto Body. They do all of my uh, my work on my cars. Um, and they do just a great job. And you guys are going to be able to see the difference here. I think I actually have some uh, before pictures of what this fender looked like. When I first bought this car, um, right here, right in this area here, it looked like somebody had either fallen, maybe had their keys in their hand or something like that because it had this big, like, curved... Uh, spot in the fender and it had gone all the way down down through the paint all the way through the primer and everything and uh, It just looked terrible and so uh, um, I lived with the car for like maybe a month and I couldn't handle it any longer and uh, so I ended up um, finding finding the uh, uh, Jonathan over there. This is um, He's the manager and he's also uh, part owner of the company and I um, he uh, he said he could get us all taken care of, and his dad just is a, a phenomenal painter, has been doing it for a long time. And so uh, everyone was telling me, oh, you should leave the scratch, you should leave the scratch because the paint's never going to match. These people did such an awesome job. You cannot tell. Um, they, they took this thing apart. They did it exactly the way it's supposed to be done, and um, and it, it's, just, it's just perfect. They also, um, they also shot the 88. Um, now this one goes on a little bit more here, uh, a little bigger story, um, but uh, when I got this car um, a few months back, and I haven't really done a lot of video about this car, um, but uh, this whole side had a bunch of little scratches uh, in it, and I had tried to get those scratches out, and I ended up burning through the clear coat. And when I did that, um, I didn't realize what I had just bit off. Um, basically, this was 1988 paint, which was oil-based at the time. And it was also, uh, there's, no, there's no fenders and hood separate. This is a whole clamshell. Um, and the front bumper had some spots um, op over in this front corner here where it had gotten hit before. But the rest of the car, as you can see, is in great shape and so I had taken it around I was trying to be cheap and I took it around to a couple of different shops around and they said wow well uh, yeah it's great it, you know the body's in great shape but you know, we're never gonna be able to match this paint we all you know everyone uses a water-based paint now they'll never be able to get it to match um, so I took it back over to Trino's again like I was telling you uh, 
the owner, um, Mr. Trino, he actually, uh, he's actually been shooting paint for probably about 30 years now, I'm gonna venture to say. And um, they assured me that he knows how to be able to do this. And so this is, this over here, this is oil and this is water. He shot this whole front clip so this is water based here that's oil based there and he's able to blend this right into this door and i can't tell a difference i don't know if the camera will pick that up or not but what a difference that makes uh that i did not have to ruin the original paint job just because i did something stupid so i got the car over here to trino's auto body and the car's sitting over here waiting uh for them to be able to do the color matches um you can see right here this is their shop they're at uh, 1825 Fulton Avenue and here in Sacramento. And uh, like I said, they've done really good work for me on both my cars. Um, it's like they're already starting to take a look at it over there, so I'm gonna stay out of their hair. But um, he's gonna go ahead and be painting the front nose as well as all the uh, carbon flash, so. So guys, we're here at Trino's Auto Body picking up the bumper and they've got it sitting out here already just to kind of tease me a little bit. Take a look at this thing. Doesn't this look great? Guys, now this is Trino's son, John. He's been, uh, actually it's Jonathan, right? John? Jonathan. Okay. And uh, he's been hooking me up here, getting this all taken care of, but take a look at this. Doesn't this look awesome? It's badass, man. Yeah, I'm tickled. I am totally tickled. It came out beautiful. So guys, like I was saying uh, earlier in the video, if uh, if you guys have any need, need or want for paint work, uh, you guys need to come see these guys. They will they will get you taken care of. Um, so be sure and ask for John or Alex, and they will be able to hook you up. So guys, I just got everything all loaded into the truck here, and take a look at that. Isn't that just awesome? And I cannot wait. We're a week ahead of the game before before I'm going to be able to do this. We're taking all this stuff up to Terry's today, and it's just going to sit in Terry's shop and sit there and cure and get nice and hard over the over this next week. Um, but man, I was like, I, I wish I could start working on it now. It just looks really great. Before we get started here, I just want to cover what's actually coming in the box. When you get one of these, you're going to big, get a nice big crate, which you have seen already in my original video when I took it to the body shop. But you saw that it was just all black. You can see here after we got it from the body shop, you can see that they've color matched the paint. And we've got our bumper ready to go. We dropped this off over at Terry's shop here last week and just allowed the paint to cure. You can see right here, here's the, the front splitter. Okay, we've just been, like I said, just letting it sit for a week. I just wanted to make sure that the paint was nice and cured. And I had them paint all of the grill parts. I think I showed that to you originally that these are all just painted black. So they did a carbon flash paint on all of the grill work. Okay, as well as the, as well as the uh, side vents um, and the, uh, I don't know exactly what you call these. Uh, they're like a winglet that's up in the front that it helps support the front of the splitter. Now, there's not a lot of hardware to this. Um, if you if you have a uh, a car before the cameras came out, you'll only be using these covers right here. Okay, which I had them go ahead and paint, and those will actually get inserted into the front of the grill over here. If you have a camera system, uh, then you would be using these buckets right here, okay? These are part of the front of the trim that ends up getting snapped in place onto the bumper or cover itself. And then this is a reinforcing uh, trim piece that gets riveted onto the bottom. We'll be showing you how that's done. So as far as the hardware is concerned, you've got a few clips here that it comes with and you can see the screws, the nuts, and some retaining clips. And that is really all there is to this. This is this should be a complete, just remove the bumper and put, it, put the new one on, okay? So then the only thing that it doesn't include, and Terry's handing me that right now, is a new C7 emblem. So I'm gonna set that right there. 
when we get ready to do this, you're going to see that I went down and I bought some automotive, automotive grade uh, masking tape. You don't have to use that, but this is the best stuff, so it doesn't stick uh, really hard. It, it stays on, but when you go to pull it off, you're not leaving all that residue on there. What we're going to be doing is we'll be lining the corners of the existing fenders as well as the new uh, bumper cover. So as we're adjusting everything and getting it on the car, we don't accidentally chip the corners of the paint. Um, other than that, I think what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into the video now and we're going to show you uh, taking it off. Now we're not going to cover real hard and heavy taking it off. Um, you'll, you'll see it, we'll train the camera on it, we'll talk about it, but the biggest concern that you're going to have is putting the new one on. So we'll be a lot more in depth on putting it on rather than taking this one off. So anyway, uh, guys, go ahead and sit back and relax, and hopefully when, you, when we're done, uh, you won't have any, uh, any worries about putting a new front bumper on your car. The first thing you're going to do is we've got the car on the ground still. We, are, we do have it on a lift. That way we can get underneath. But right now on the top side, we have to take some bolts loose, okay? So this cosmetic trim here is just kind of pressed in place. So you can just grab it here, and you can just pull it kind of up and out like that. It's, as you can see, it's just held in with a couple clips. Okay, nothing major. I'm just gonna set that off to the side. What that does is that really re reveals a torque screw right here. We've also got a press-in clip right here that we'll be able to remove with our, uh, our nylon pry tool. And if you don't have one of those, you can use a screwdriver if you're being very careful. And then across the front here is the uh, some more additional torques and then you get over to the other side closer to Terry and you're going to have the press tool as well as pulling another cover off right here. Okay, just like that. And you can that reveals this other screw. Now that takes care of all the screws up on the top of the bumper. Now, there's one other thing that you want you want to and want to know and this was not made known to me when I first pulled my bumper off the very first time. There is a couple little baby spring-loaded clips that are right up inside here, and you want to take good, careful, uh, and kind of lift up and lift up here at the same time, because if you don't, what you end up doing is, and I did it, I have a baby, baby hairline crack in the clear right here. And it did that on both sides, and I didn't realize that until, until it was done. So this is just a pressure fitting that fits down in there. Um, so when we go to put the new bumper in, it's just going to snap in place. But getting it out sometimes is a, a real bear. So you just want to wiggle it and don't pry on either side, otherwise you'll end up with that crack. Especially if you're wanting to be able to save your bumper in the event that you want to go back to it later on. Okay. Now, a couple other things that you're going to do. We're going to come over here to the wheel well right here. And you're going to see that there's, I believe it's three screws, one here, one here, and one here. Those have to come out also. Then right here at the seam is, again, just a press fitting. Now, this one is a nice smooth spot. It will just, you grabbing this corner, it's going to go ahead and try to come out. It shouldn't give you uh, any problem at all getting that off. Then at that point, we'll be able to go underneath the car, and we're going to undo all of the, the factory screws that will allow us to go ahead and take this off. Now, I have the the larger ZR1 style uh, splitter on the bottom. Now, we, we may have a rivet or two that we have to drill out because we might have gone into the bumper on that one, but if you are doing a the regular factory stage one, stage two, that should just go ahead and come completely off with the bumper. But we're gonna find that out when we get underneath there. Um, I, like I said, I've had this bumper cover off a bunch of times before I started putting splitters on the car. So um, that really wasn't an issue. I was able to take this bumper on and off on the floor because I didn't have this in the way. So um, anyway, uh, that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and start doing it now and you'll be able to see us do it. But I just wanted to explain the process. Doing, putting the other bumper on, pretty much the exact and just in reverse, except the way the front splitter on the ZR1 style goes on, we're going to have to put the bumper on and then we have to snap 
the, uh, the splitter itself into place. And you'll see what I'm talking about later on in the video. I want to explain this to you. There's a, there's a small little clip right here. If you don't have one of these little tools, not a big deal. Just slow, very carefully put a screwdriver in between here. But you can see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go right in between, right like that. See that? And I'm just going to lift it up, just like that. And then I can take the same tool and I can lift it and just wiggle it out, just like that, okay? Now we only have that on one, one on each side, the rest of them are all torques, and so Terry's gonna go ahead and pull all the torques out. Now, these three screws that have to come out, those are T15s. So Terry's gonna go ahead and get those out on both sides. And then once we get these screws out, we'll be able to go ahead and lift the car up so we can get underneath it to start taking the rest of it loose. That does that. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lift it up. Now if you guys had like a little rolling ramps or something like that so you could at least get your head underneath there, you could do that. You wouldn't have to, uh, you wouldn't have to lift it all the way up. But it sure does make it easier. We're gonna see if we can get all of this off in one piece with the splitter and all that stuff, all in one piece. There's 12 bolts on this one. It goes all the way around. We're just gonna take them out and go from there. Okay. Well, that's a promising sign. It looks like it's coming away from it. Yeah. Okay, there's four bolts under here that hold this. It's just like an air dam type of thing. You just want to take them four bolts out. When them four bolts are out, you'll be able to wiggle this out and it comes right out. Now our wonderful what, little screw. Want, I'll show you where it's at. It's right here. It's right in the very center, just like the nose of it, right in the center of it. But it's what I want Scott to do is go on the outside and just hold the bumper. Because when I take this, the bumper might want to fall off. Okay. So be very careful. You ready? I got it. Okay. Now we've got, almost have the bumper free. But before we want to be able to pull it off, we've got a couple of things we've got to take off the bottom. But while it's still being supported, we want to get this light out of here. So there's a couple of clips that are just little press-on clips. And I'll show that to you as I once I get them out. Um, we can get them, get them on camera and then that way it'll be easier for you to see it. But they just come out like so. So you can see that there's just a press clip here and I have one right here and one right there. Okay. And then you just have this little plug and you're just going to pull that out like so. And then you can press and it pops off. And you're just going to do that on the other side also. For here on this one, when I had put this one back together, I had messed up this clip. But there's a little clip in here that's under, under pressure. So like I was telling you, not to be able to crack the paint, you want to get underneath here with your hand, like that, and then lift up. Now you can see that that was, that was snapped right in. It's just a pressure clip, okay? This one had one also, and it's stuck in here and it's broke. Now... I, just so I have it, I'll end up putting it back together. I'll glue it back together, epoxy it when I'm done, just so I have this bumper in case I ever need it again. But that's really all there is to it. You just don't want to reef up on this side or on this side alone. You want to get it and bring it up. Okay, so that now it's free and clear there. And it should pop up. Now this is, this is a, it's pressure in there, so it's, it's kind of hard. There, there we go. So that's how it's supposed to come loose. It is a little tight, so you just got to use a little finesse, okay? So then at that point, we should be able to pull this bumper free. So we're just going to lift up. Like that. Okay, and then at that point, Terry's already got, he's already got this one free. You can see right there, that one just comes right out. And there it's just going to come free like that. Okay. okay. 
So now, both of us should be able just to lift this right off. Correct. Yeah. Right. Should be able just to pull it right straight off, just like so, just like a piece of cake. Nothing to do. Look at that. So let's put this right here. Nope. Just right here, right now. All right. So now we've got our bumper. We've got it sitting upside down, and all we're going to be doing is we're going to be snapping our grills in place. Okay. So they all just snap in. Hopefully you can see that. There's just snaps all the way across here, all the way around. And you can see the tabs. And these tabs are just, you're just going to line these little guys up like this. Going to get them lined up. So then the next one is going to be the center one. Now, real quick, this center piece right here, these little bumps, they're going to actually fit in between the two pieces of plastic on the bumper. Okay. All right. And then there's clips all over the place. So let's go ahead and get that in between. Over here on this side, I'm going to try to move the camera a little bit farther forward over here. And Terry's got these little trim parts over here. And these have to be inserted into, into the bumper also. So they just they just hook on here like so. Got compound on it when they rubbed on it. Okay, and we're just going to insert those here into the grill. I, I knew when I saw this part that we wanted to make sure this paint was cured because of the amount of pressure that we were going to have to put on these. If this was a day old paint, we would have left marks in this paint. There is no, no question in my mind. Here. Once you know how they go in, it's kind of easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one's a lot easier. We're to the point we've got the car on down low again, so we can go ahead and we can put our bumper on. Now you can see I've taped off the edges of the of the fenders here, so in the event that we get a little carried away, our bumper isn't going to chip our paint. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and help Terry. We're going to grab it and bring it around. So now what we're doing here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the bumper in place on the top and get it, get it uh, fairly secure here. And the other thing you want to notice here, I don't know if you can see it, there's two little, two little tabs right below your headlight and there's also two tabs, the slots are below the headlight, the two tabs are on the bumper and that's a guide slot so you can actually guide these into the correct position. And then you want to make sure that you lift up on the top edge of the bumper here. Terry, you're a little bit low here. There you go. Okay. Okay. And that's going to allow you to go ahead and get it lined up. Okay. So, you know, you're... There we go. Feels like you're... There we go. You getting it? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm just taking your tape off of you. Okay. So I get Did I get a little too carried away with the tape? Yeah, this one fit perfect. Okay. This one's perfect right there, right. and I got my little tabs in there. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the tape there a little bit so I can make sure that I get it in there. And then you're okay. just literally Wait, going let's to... Let's see, they just slide, it's like over them, okay? Can you see that? Yep. There you go. And then you just push down. It's like that. Push with your again. lock. Yeah. And then you can pull the tape off of here, like that. 
and then this one will slide into the slot also. Now you want to make darn sure when you're doing that that these little tabs go in place, otherwise it's going to fight you. Like I mentioned, you know this is the first time that we're doing this, so uh, we put the bumper cover on and then we realized we had not put these clips on. So these clips are provided, and you just want to pinch them down a little bit so they'll stay. But these are the replacement screws for the fender well screws. And the reason behind that is, is that when you go to put the, the side winglet that goes on here, the screws are a little bit too short for it. So this way, those will actually go in and they'll actually fit correctly. Make sure that that nut part is on the back side of the tab, like so. Yeah, so it's smooth. There you go. Like so. There we go. There you go. See, they come wide like that. Just squeeze them together. That just kind of so they'll hold them on. And there's a little slot actually, so you can get them in place exactly where they go. Okay, this goes like so. Mm -hmm. And then you slide that and a slot. And take this and just snap it back in place. Let's go do the other one. I'll come back and fix that. Okay. You want to take this wire and put it through this big slot. And this here should just go like so. And this one it just snaps in. There you go. So now what Terry's doing here is he's just going to go ahead and put one screw here up on each side just to hold it so we don't end up with it falling on us. Let me grab something here real quick. Them holes aren't lining up just right. So what I'm doing is I'm taking and sticking an owl in just to pull it back so I can get this in place. Get yourself a little equalizer. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna snug it up like that. We'll tighten up later. Just, I want one in each corner. Just to hold it while we start flexing and playing with stuff down here. We don't, yeah, we definitely don't want the bumper to come flying off the car. That definitely would not be good. There you go. Okay, there's four more, or three, two more screws in that, pla that pla two plastic things. One of the plastics goes here and one on the other side and there's two screws in the middle. Right. We're going to leave them out for right now. So now that we've got our, our lights in the side of the fenders, we've basically got everything kind of fitted. We've got a screw up here at the top on both sides just to make sure that the bumper's not going anywhere. Um, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to lift. We know it's not going to fall on us, so now we can go ahead and we can lift the car back up in the air, and then we can start putting the bottom together. And guys... Got, I mean, look at that paint have match. No idea how it goes on. I know. Look at that paint match. Yeah, perfect. They job. did. A, Trino's perfect. did an awesome job, guys. I mean that. Yeah, and that just looks unbelievably awesome. There's these five little pieces. This one here is a middle. It's got a point on it, so you kind of know. These here have an angle on them. You want the angle facing to the tires. These on the ends. They have little latches that you're going to latch them in. Now, let me show you where we're going to put them. And each one of these screws is going to put it on, and I'll sh tell you why, and then I'll go through the process of putting each one of them on. Okay. Is what these do is they hold this in place. That's all they do. It's absolutely for nothing, really. But and with the grill and the bumper on, there's no way for you to get back up underneath there and get screws in and get in there. So if what I decided to do is try to figure out if I could do it like so. By taking and putting this in here, and this in here, and this in here. Okay, now when I put the other ones on, you can move the bumper out and they'll pop up and they'll go right into place. And then when you, when you tighten this nut up, it'll tighten them all down. All, it, all they are is to sit here to hold this from not flopping around. That's all it is. Yeah, so when 
So there's notches that these brackets will actually fit into, into the bumper. Well, and they've when got the bump, these. Yeah, when the bumper comes backwards, it's going to yeah, lock them in place. When it all tightens back up, right. it locks everything in. Right. Uh, so I'm going to start over here on this end. Because see, it's got kind of a little thing. So what I want to do is I want to put that in there. That like that. Put the nut on. And if you're thinking, well, there's no lock nut or nothing, this is plastic. Would you tighten that down enough? It kind of locks itself. So yep. this big slit, the big part is in the bottom. So I'm just going to go like so, like so. I'm just snugging it up with my finger. Let me pull this out. Pull this out. Let's see. And basically, yeah, that just slides right under there. Okay. And these. And and when you when when you put the when you pull this back and you tighten up all of this stuff, it will pull in on that. Right. So okay. at that point, these are locked in place. Yeah. They're, they're, and it's not locked, going anywhere. Yeah. So is what I'm going to do, make sure that these here line up with it and just tighten every one of them up. Now these are those little tabs we were just showing you, putting them up there, we started the screws. Okay, Scott. Okay, I'm holding the front of it up. Let me just hold it like that for a minute. Let me get one screw started here, which would be over get this you. way. There you go. This is the fun part, guys. We get to actually start putting it all back together now. Now, what we need to do next is we're gonna take the actual the splitter splitter, and mm -hmm. snap it in. It snaps into these places up here. It goes right up in inside yeah. this slot right here. You can see them right here, yeah. right there, and then they'll start to bolt all the way around to the, to the side of the bumper. This is actually gonna end up being over here. I just don't have it all the way in up at the top yet. Yeah, I see it. I got it. Okay. So you can see here, he's just putting the screw in there like that, just to kind of hold it in place, okay? We're not tightening anything up, we're just holding it. But you can see right here on these clips that they just clip right in. You can see that that one's clipped, that one's clipped, that one's clipped in, this one's clipped in, that one's clipped in, and so is this one. So those are all locked in place. Here's the driver's side. Now we've got this part pretty much put together over here. You can see how this looks, and you can see that the new clips that they supplied and the new screws go in right here. They did supply four rivets that normally would go right here, and I didn't like how that looked. So these, these screws right here are the original screws that came out of the fender well. So we just went ahead and we put those in with the retaining clips. Now the clips that are on the back of this, which see if I can get down there so you can see it, you can see them right there. Those came off of the ears that on that's on the original bumper that these screws originally screwed into. Now, Terry and I had to do a little bit of working this to make this all work. The screws here the little the hole that because uh, these screws are a little bit bigger with a smaller head as you can see that these would not have fit so um, by doing this this fits in there really well except that the hole for the inner wheel well or the wheel skirt itself had to be wallered out and we're going to be showing you that on this other side i just wanted to be able to show you the basically the end result of us trying to figure out what we had to do now we're gonna come around over the other side over here. We've got this side still apart and uh, we're gonna go ahead and show you how this one, this side is put together and then we'll be able to get down below and finish it up. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this side on. 
Now you wanna make sure that this piece of the plastic gets tucked behind this fender, okay? So this is a, not real tricky, but just be aware of it, okay? You can see right there, okay? And then we wanna make sure that the fender well gets tucked all the way behind the bumper. Okay, now, now Scott's gonna hold this for me, hold that, because on the other side we found out that the easiest thing to do is trying to line these hold up. They don't really line up that. So as what I've done, I've taken a magic marker and I can see right in here the clip for the screw. And I'm just gonna take and take a file and waddle that out just like that. And just like that. And, ooh, this one here is really close. And this one here, same idea, right? Down into there. You know, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this black stuff off with a file. Okay. Okay. Now at that point, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this back out a little bit here. I'm gonna take it apart so I don't file the rest of the body. Okay. <laughs> and I'll hold the bumper out a little bit. Okay. And then this way, Terry can mm -hmm. go ahead and file these holes down. And don't worry about getting too big of a hole or something. This is sandwiched between the piece that goes on here and this. So it's, it doesn't matter if they're little out, you don't have to have them perfect. Just make sure you got enough clearance because it makes it a whole lot easier when you start doing it. Okay. I think we should be all right right here. Okay. All right. So okay. Now okay. Scott's gonna Hold Put it. this thing back in here. There you go. Hold it about right there. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to tuck this little guy back in there again. Again, make sure that that little guy gets back up inside the fender. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Now let's see if my hole's lined up. Yeah. Come on now. Start for me. looks like we know what we're doing. <laughs> what we're gonna do now is um, we're going to adjust this in so it fits into the slot and then we'll put the screws in. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking the uh, screws that were originally into here and we're taking them instead of rivets and I'm taking the clip off of this side that was here. Mm -hmm. I took them clips off because these come with new clips for the screws. So I'm gonna take these and I just run these through the hole and then you'll feel that little, put that little piece on it and screw it in there. Okay. And just do the same thing with the other one. Because what I'm doing is I'm taking, putting the screw through the hole and it's, it doesn't have nothing to clip on. But once you do it like that, it just locks itself, so you don't have to worry about it. And that just looks more, a, more of a factory finish than a rivet. And one thing I forgot to do was have Scott clean these things for me. Yeah, <laughs> I cleaned the other side, guys. I just didn't clean these. So I'll clean them in a little while. Our 15 Torx here is, I can see, been used pretty heavily. I'm gonna have to buy a new one. You mean this thing? Yeah, it's <laughs> starting to twist. I can see the tip on it. It's kind of uh, yeah. wore out. Yeah, we've used it a lot on this car. <laughs> All right, okay. so that's that. So now this movement that you're seeing right here, guys, that will go away once this is all tightened up underneath, okay? But now we're to a point where everything is done up here, right? We're done down here, all the way across here. We just have to go underneath the car now and 
finish up what's underneath the car. And then once we're all done with that, then we can come back up here and we can put the rest of our bolts right back in the top. Uh, you might want to let them know the reason that we did this was to get everything. There was so many different lineup points that starting for that in and putting it together and coming over and putting this in together, it shirred up this enough so that now we can figure out what to do with the other pieces right. that go to it. Right, yeah, that, that was, Terry's so right on this. We, we were moving things around and as we were moving, everything is moving on us underneath. So we figured we start up here, we get this all tiled in, we get it all tight, and then that way, now the bumper's exactly where it needs to be. Now we can, man we can massage it underneath and it should be a heck of a lot easier. Okay, right here we had them two little rubber things, these little plastic pins like that go in. You just put them in there and then you lock these things down. Mm, like so. Let me try this. My fingers are just not quite tough enough. There we go. And lock it. Now, all we gotta do is put these screws back in here. One goes here. One goes on the other side. Okay, now one more on the other side. And this finishes this off. Now Scott was just talking about he might not want to put that piece back on there. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna film that in the video or not. There was a rubber piece that actually fit right here. Um, that is kind of a little rubber weather seal. Um, and I don't know, I, I, I'm kind of liking the way that it looks nice and clean here. And since I'm, since I keep my car as clean as I do and I wipe it down every time I wash the car, I don't think that I'm going to put that back on because it just looks so much better this way. I, I think I like it this way better. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we should right. be done up here. There's the only thing we have left is to put these back in place. Okay. Okay, so which there's those trim right pieces right there. Yep, and it covers that one screw, and it guys just kind of goes right up into the fender. Okay. Okay. And then you got the other side right here. I can tell Scott had oh I got tape and everything on here, Scott. I know he's trying to tape the car together, guys. Mm -hmm. I think you should take these off every two weeks and wash them down and wash yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, you I, go. I think that's what you need to do, Scott. Yeah, there you go. And those just kind of lock in, guys. It's pretty easy. Simple. Okay. Okay, now, now, just so you know, if for some reason you break one of the tabs on these, which are very easy to do, you can use two-sided stick tape to stick it back together. Okay. Um, when I got when I got Jennifer's car, uh, one of hers was was cracked. And so I was just able to use two, th two side stick tape and it works great. We are done with the top side. Everything lines up, everything looks really good. I am totally stoked on how this looks. Went ahead and wiped down my fingerprint marks all over everything. Okay. So now our next step is we're gonna go ahead and put the car up in the air and then we'll be able to go ahead and button up the bottom. But uh, you can see the gaps are all fine, they look there's nothing irregular. Everything looks great. Everything lines up just fine. All right, guys. So what we've got here is we've got our upper piece here, our trim plate. You can see here that all these screws are all lining up, okay? These are all lining up over here, but they're not lining up here. See that? Okay, and it's not lining up right here. I apologize for us not showing you how to screw these in. It's very simple. You can get up in there and put the nut on the back of these screws. Um, so you can get in there. These are 10 millimeter nuts on here. Um, and uh, so, so far it's exactly the way it's supposed to go together, except this is not lining up for my car. Again, I don't have another car to be able to compare this to um, with this front nose. So I don't know if my car had been damaged at one point, I'm not sure, um, and it's just not lining up, or if this is, a, uh, if this is some sort of uh, miscalculation on the, 
on the bumper piece, but we'll show you exactly what we're gonna do uh, to fix mine. So in the event that you need, you run into this problem when you do yours, um, you know, you'll know exactly what to do. So guys, now we've got, we've got our skid plate back on and we've got our bolts and they're lining up now. Our screws are lining up. Um, and we're gonna have to end up putting some screws into here and into here. This may have to be a rivet, um, not exactly sure yet. Um, and then we wanna be able to get this a little bit tighter up here. So we're gonna end up probably doing some sort of angle iron of some sort, we're not sure yet, up here in this bracket um, to be able to hold this skid plate up, up tighter and high, higher up. Um, like I said, I, I'm half wondering if something had happened to my car. I'm not exactly sure, guys. So you can see here, Terry's making a little little angle iron bracket here that he's going to go ahead and rivet a couple rivets on. It's going to hold the, the side, uh, this bottom skirt up. That way, uh, that way that will be able to stay up there and we'll be able to go ahead and secure the rest of everything to it. Honestly, don't know at this point um, if this is a miscalculation on the bracket or if it was something that has been damaged on my car. I'm, if it was, I wasn't aware of it. Um, but uh, I think this thing, I think this thing is going to be way more bulletproof than it was beforehand. So uh, that's just a, a testament to Terry. Thank God. Like I always tell you, you know, it's like I'm not afraid to do anything here at Terry's shop because he can make it work. So right now what he's doing in the back, back there, is he's making another bracket like this one to go ahead and bring on over here so we can get this part tied up. I mean, it's already pretty tight. He just wants to make darn sure it's not going anywhere. So, um, so that's, that's what we're up against right this second. So I'll give you guys a bird's eye view here of what he's working on. Here's his shop back here, his machine shop. You can see here, he's, he's just making brackets right here. I won't give away all of his trade secrets. That's why if you guys need to come, need to have one of these bumpers installed, you can give us a call and we'll be able to take care of it. So, so far, the only thing that we have added to the kit that didn't come with it, we've utilized all the screws. The only thing we've added is a few rivets and these two L brackets that Terry actually made. So these are custom made to fit exactly where, he, where they need to go. And so this is like I showed you guys a second ago. It's already pretty darn tight. But just in the event that a, you know a, uh, a rivet gives way or a screw comes out or whatever, I am not going to be happen, having the, the floppies going on down the road. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I've seen a lot. I, I, I've seen a lot of cars uh, that their, uh, their splitter gives way somehow, the supports give way, and all of a sudden, this whole front end of the splitter flips down and starts grinding on the, on the pavement. So I uh, definitely don't want that. Uh, and so anyway.
put one right in here. And that'll push the adder. And I think this car's been wrecked on this side. Yeah. And that's why it's having a hard time lining that stuff up. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I kind of think that you're right. pretty much it. Now you've got to put the emblem on and you got to put your little covers on to cover up your little light cake. That's it. That's it. So that's the last of it. Um, so guys you can see we've got the little covers. We'll lower these down um, and it looked like they're going to need to have a little stick tape that's going to lock them in place. Uh, these are just guide tabs that lock that tell me where they go here um, so we've got both of them so we'll be able to get those in there and um, and then we'll uh, we'll get the emblem on so once Terry lowers the car down a little bit so I can actually work up in here in the grill he's had me on my tippy toes all day That's good. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right that's perfect right there Terry We've got our sticky tape here on our, our little covers. Okay, now if you were using the cameras, uh, you would have used the camera piece that came with it. I don't have cameras, so I've just got my little guide pins here. And I'm just going to go ahead and stick this in. Just like that. Come on. There we go. All right, so now we've got that in there. We're about ready to go ahead and put the emblem on here. I've already pulled the sticky tape off. Now what we've done is we've marked, we marked our corners. We're exactly six inches to this corner, and we're six inches to this corner, and this is our center point. Okay, so our emblem is gonna go right here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start here right at the center point. Okay, and I'm going to lightly try to get this to go right there in the corner. And I think I actually should probably do my, my wings right there like that first and then adjust, adjust my center point with the tape, just like that. I got okay. this. You can okay. let your fingers go. Okay. Okay, go ahead and let it go for a second. Okay, and now I'm just gonna lightly set it there, so if I need to, I can pull it back off. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull this up. Hang on, hang on. We want to get a good eyeball on this just to make sure that it looks good. Now just let it sit there. I've been backing up. You better, okay. you better take it. Right. So now at that point, you can see here we've got a right dead center. We've got our, our distances are all the same. It looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just stand up and get a an overview here to make sure it looks good to me, which it does. And I'm going to go ahead and stick it. All right. Now at this point, I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to hold it down for about 45 seconds. And guys, quite frankly, you really can't even tell that that doesn't even have the indention in it. So we've got all our fingerprints and finger marks all over it. So we're going to get that all cleaned up and then we'll be able to get you a nice good view of what it looks like. But uh, the thing came out really good. 
So guys, hopefully you found this video helpful and when it comes time that you want to be able to put a front nose on your C7, you'll know exactly how to go about doing it. Um, those of you that have been subscribed to the channel, I want to thank you guys for watching. You know, we're growing all the time and it's, uh, it's just really a privilege to be able to do this. Terry and I are having a great time doing it. Um, this time we didn't, we didn't get Terry dirty and we didn't hurt his eyes. Uh, you know, he, he came out unscathed. This is one of the hardest jobs we've ever done, but it's the only one that I know of that he didn't draw blood. So anyway, <laughs> Uh, guys, I just want to thank you guys all for watching. If you guys, if this is your first time watching the show, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell. That way you'll be alerted of all of our next uploads that we have. And we've got a bunch of different stuff coming. So, you know, just check us out even more and tell your friends. I really appreciate it. Um, and I guess that's about it. So you guys have a great day. Um, I'm filming this on Father's Day this morning, and uh, we've got to get home to be able to take care of our little dogs and then be able to go to a Father's Day party. So um, I'm really excited about that. And um, hopefully all you fathers out there, you have a happy Father's Day. I know you're going to be seeing this late, but hopefully you all did. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching, and you guys have a great day.